the spaces that we live in are designed in a certain way to offload cognitive processes. My pencil mug and light are on the right. I don't need to think about where they are. I keep my primary writing pen, a Rot Ring 600, on the left. By putting things in certain places, it helps me not think about where they are. I'm able to cognitively offload those things. But at the same time, it tells you a lot about who I am. You're watching The Caffeinated Bible. My name is David Paris, and today what I'd like to do is give you a tour of my backdrop here so you understand a little bit more about who I am. As I was starting The Caffeinated Bible channel on YouTube, I experimented with a lot of different settings around the house to use for my videos. I eventually settled on this shot with my table in the middle of the room. I moved it from my desk over here and the bookshelves behind me. I felt like this conveyed something about who I was and also what the channel was about. However, the back wall was a beige color when we started out. It appeared too yellow and made balancing the color settings of my camera really difficult. At the same time, I was wrestling with some pretty serious cardiac issues and I was in no position to move the books or the bookcases and paint the back wall. My wife, though, took down all of the books, moved the bookcases, painted the wall this neutral gray color, and then put everything back up for me when I was not able to do it. Thank you very, very much. Growing up, being active was a big part of my life. And over the years, I've pared down the number of different activities that I'm involved with to basically bicycling. But then there's mountain biking, road biking, tandem riding with my wife, and gravel biking, and most recently, e-bikes. I guess that's not exactly what the term narrowed down means. But I was hooked on bikes when I was about 10 years old and got my first Stingray bike. I still remember going to the shop with my parents to pick it out. I love bikes not just because they're great to ride, but there's a beauty to them as well. I was lucky enough to get this handmade Tomasini from Italy at an incredible price when I was riding for a local team. I don't know about you, but there's just something about anything that comes out of Italy that seems to drip with style and class. I've spent a lot of time reading over my life, a blessing and a curse of being in academics. This back wall is primarily occupied by the volumes that I use for reference. In the far corner, I have resources for Greek, Hebrew, Latin, and German. In the middle are my dictionary and encyclopedia books. I haven't purchased many of these in the past 10 years, mainly because I've been investing in digital versions of these resources. I find that the software versions are faster and easier to use and I can accomplish more in a more convenient manner and they're also portable. I get to take them with me wherever I go. I now carry more resources on my iPad than all the books on the back shelf there. However, a good print book is like a fine work of art, especially if they contain images and illustrations. Sort of like the four pictures I have in the center there, but more on that in a minute. You'll notice that there's this gap here in the wall where there's no bookcases. That's because we've got the electrical outlet, but I've also got three pipes coming out of the wall. My plan is to put like a small little cabinet with a sink and basin here so I can make coffee down here in my office. But we're gonna to have to see if we ever get around to that. Lots of other house projects to do first. One of my favorite things to do is visit museums. And when I was in Washington DC a little bit over 10 years ago, I had the privilege on going on a special tour of the Smithsonian's Freer Gallery. They had a special collection of biblical texts entitled In the Beginnings, the Bible before the year 1000. They produced a beautiful volume of that collection that contains photographic reproductions from the exhibit. I love it because it shows you just not how the Bible was copied prior to the invention of the printing press, but the artistry the copyists invested in that labor. Last week, my video was on Tyndale and his translation of the Bible. You can find photographic reproductions of Bibles like his. They give you a great window into how books were read 500 years ago. When I was doing my PhD, some of my research involved going down to the British Library in London to do research. I had access to their special collections 
and it was not unusual for me to have access to hand copied manuscripts from a thousand years ago or more. This brings back those memories. Two areas that I've done a lot of research in has been the miracle stories and the parables in the New Testament. The miracles because they raise questions about the intersection of culture, history, science, religion, and medicine. And the parables because of their narrative, artistry, and power. Another area in my shelf here are books dedicated to the history of how particular passages in the Bible have been interpreted over 2,000 years ago. Ah, look, here's a fine book along that line. Finally, on this wall are the books that reflect my PhD and doctoral research and interests. My doctorate was in philosophical hermeneutics, or the philosophy of how you understand, interpret, or explain anything. This overlaps with my interest in miracles and parables and the history of interpretation. This brings me back to the four pictures I have hanging in the middle of the wall right now. The first is a life-size reproduction of John 20 from Codex Sinaiticus. This is a famous manuscript dating from 325 to about 360 AD that Count Tischendorf spirited away from St. Catherine's Monastery in the Sinai, hence its name, Sinaiticus. To balance that out, I have a print from St. John's Bible, a recently commissioned hand-done Bible. This particular iconic image is taken from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 33. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with greater power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. Alongside that, I have two modern artworks. One is by Vincent Van Gogh, the other by René Magritte. The Peasant Shoes by Vincent Van Gogh is a rather bland painting at first. According to Heidegger, you need to dwell before an artwork, to stand before and quietly take it in and allow it to convey its meaning to you. This is the work of art. Magritte's The Human Condition reminds me of the parables on a number of levels. You have a picture in a picture in a picture, like the parables are a story within a story within a story. That concludes my office tour. I'll have links to some of the things I discussed underneath this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Also, give it a thumbs up, or as a student of mine said, thumb up it. That is a great way to let YouTube know that these videos should be promoted to other people, and it serves as a great way to encourage me as well. Until next week, I will leave you with the word of peace.